they say drag is a contact sport and they are so right about that. Hi, Women's Health. This is Gigi Good from season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race and I'm going to be breaking down Madonna, the unauthorized musical in a RuPaul's Drag Race version of performance review. My next album went platinum fast and so did I. Critics don't know what to make of me. Am I real art or publicity? Nearly every season of RuPaul's Drag Race, or at least lately, there has been a rusical, and our rusical is Madonna, the unauthorized rusical. Each of you will portray Madonna from a different iconic moment in her epic career. I had originally wanted cone bra Madonna, Jean-Paul Gaultier's iconic bra with a ponytail. Cone bra Madonna? I want that so bad. Needless to say, as soon as I saw Britta in that ponytail, I was like, thank God I did not get this outfit because that hair would just have have looked terrible on me. Would you be willing to do Unapologetic Madonna? I ended up settling for Unapologetic Madonna, and I only say settling because in the moment I really was, I was like, okay, well, I don't really know anything about Unapologetic Madonna. This is such a plastic tear thing to say, but Madonna actually didn't really get introduced to me as someone I really started to study until like two years ago. So this era was inspired by the Papa Don't Preach music video and song. Papa don't preach. As soon as I saw the video, I was like, Oh my God, the simplest, most streamlined outfit is the only thing you could ask for when you're doing a rusical because you, you don't want to be swallowed up by the look. You want to be able to wear the look and not have it wear you. So my first thought, I was like, okay, great. I'm going to be able to be Madonna. Madonna's not going to take over me. I'm Jamal Sims. I'll be your choreographer today. The next thing we had to check off our list was choreography with Jamal Sims, who I am completely infatuated with, and I'm in love with him, and he doesn't know it. Actually, he probably does know it. I DM him, like, every single day. But the hardest part of the performance was definitely the choreography, because Choreography is never a part of my drag performance. It's hard. Learning choreography is really hard and it was intimidating for me. You look terrified. I'm very terrified. Relax. Just do that part. Okay. But I have never met someone who was able to just like take all their knowledge and just force it into you. Somehow he is able to take something that you don't think you were able to do and then suddenly you are able to do it. And I, it was a blast. Anybody got that tooth paint? Got our gap tooth on. I would've got my gap ready. Keep up, lady. Team gap. Ding. Obviously, Madonna has her iconic tooth gap, so we all shared one little bottle of black tooth paint that I think probably crystal brought. That's a very crystal thing to have. The hair was all provided by Wigs and Grace, so we all got that. Now, here's the thing about the hair. They are beautiful wigs, obviously, but they were all meant for drag queens who are tall, big men. And being of a smaller frame, they were very largely styled, so I was like, all right, well, this isn't exactly her true blue hair, but we're gonna work it either way. Presenting our very own girly show. It's the world premiere of Madonna, the unauthorized rusical. I had the mindset that I was like, I am just going to have fun. And this is a fun challenge. Like when else are we gonna be able to do this type of thing with this kind of budget, these kind of lights, HD cameras, like I'm just going to have so much fun with it. And as long as the camera knows that I'm having fun with it, I am, I am fine, I'm soaring. Making art isn't easy, but that's why I do the lift that I did with the boys is something that I have never done before. Never on stage, never in heels, never in drag. I had a lot of trust in these boys. They have lots of biceps and other muscles that I don't. I was like, listen, I weigh 115 pounds. I want you boys to throw me up into the air as high as you can. <laughs> the most iconic move from the Papa Don't Preach video that we were able to incorporate was the chug move. I knew that that was such an iconic part of the video and that was the part that I was most anxious about getting right because this was the one that I knew the judges would be looking out for. They were like, do you want to wear like a jazz flat? Cause that's what she wore in the video. And I was like, nope, give me a heel. I can do a backflip in it. The backflip was definitely not the most challenging part of the performance. It's something that I've 
been able to do for a long time and it's kind of muscle memory but it was definitely the choreography because again I'm not a choreography queen my feelings going through this performance was just more more pride than nerves or anticipation or anxiety it was more like oh my god bitch I did that and they can do with it what they will and that is the mentality that I kept strongest the whole time you can get into it at the end of the number, we had our group number together, which included the fanography. They say drag is a contact sport, and they are so right about that. Being in drag is working out. You're constantly in heels, your legs hurt, your waist is cinched, you have to be standing up straight the entire time. There's a heavy wig on your head, heavy costumes. It's like the exhaustion paired with the pure adrenaline of being on RuPaul's Drag Race that you know is about to be aired like all over the world. Like it, there, there's a lot of adrenaline there that it almost like cancels out the exhaustion. <laughs> As soon as the challenge ended and we had finished doing the number, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel good. I'm safe for another week. Congratulations, Jan. You deserve to win. Then when they announced that Jan was safe. Jan, you are safe. My neck almost broke how quick I looked over it in Jan's direction because I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> she's going to kill me. <laughs> Gigi Good. Congratulations, you are the winner of this week's challenge. Being told I am the winner of the challenge is just kind of like, oh my gosh, all this work that I just built up for the past however many days is just like, oh, finally worth it and there's something to show for it. I never feel like I'm the one that needs to have my drag validated by anybody else, but to have somebody like RuPaul, who is literally the spearhead for drag right now and for the art form that I'm doing, it, it's very rewarding and it's very validating. You can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? It has been so nice to watch these episodes, especially the Madonna musical with my roommates who are Madonna freaks. That was the episode we were the most excited for and it was just very special to see their eyes light up while they're watching the screen. The response online has been crazy. One of the first reactions I got from it was from Ariana Grande. I believe she said, star. I got a text from Jeremy Scott saying how proud he was of me for, for embodying Madonna the way that I did. It's just reward after reward after reward. And it's like, you know, what did I do to deserve this? It just feels so special. Is that my new competition in the modeling world? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching Performance Review and don't forget to subscribe to Women's Health. My name is Gigi Good and thank y'all for watching.